When firefighters run into a building, the fires are burning hotter, faster, and they are giving off more toxin. It isn't the flames that are most dangerous. It's the smoke. Everything now is made out of synthetics, plastics, and all kinds of different styrenes. The International Fire Association has deemed every house fire a hazardous material incident because of the increasing levels of hydrogen cyanide and carbon monoxide found at scenes. Right now, cancer is the number one killer of firefighters in America, where it used to be heart attacks. Curtis Dunn with the Firefighter Cancer Support Network says firefighters are two times more likely to develop certain cancers. It's the most dangerous, underrecognized threat to the health and safety of nation firefighters. A statistic all too real for Green Bay Fire Captain Todd Gertz. It was stage four. I was in my pelvis and in my lungs. Gertz was diagnosed with testicular cancer in 2007. I was scared. I was scared for my kids and my wife because we were young. Luckily, after aggressive treatments and surgery, Gert says he's been cancer-free for nearly 10 years. <laughs> it only takes to know somebody that's going through cancer treatment to watch the, the pain and anguish and the difficulty of that to really know that we've got to do better. One more minute of normal breathing. And Green Bay Metro Fire Department is changing the way they fight fires. Air packs are now mandatory for even small car or garbage fires. And anytime crews are at a scene where the air is unsafe. We're never going to eliminate exposure to cancer causing products. It's just not going to happen because it's the nature of our job. But we can do things um, to help eliminate the length of the exposure, the toxicity of the exposure. During this training exercise, only wood and hay are burning. But within a minute, and, uh, monitors alarm. And, uh, Hydrogen cyanide levels are extremely high, three times the limit deemed safe by OSHA. It's the simple things that uh, are hurting us the most. Well, firefighter turnout gear protects them from some exposure, there are vulnerable spots, like their hood. This whole hood piece here, it goes around the neck and over your head is all going to be filled with soot and smoke and cancer-causing chemicals. That's where rehab stations are now used. Once a firefighter leaves the front line, they remove their gear and use wipes to clean their neck, heads, wrists, and ankles. Experts say that can take away 80% of the carcinogens. It's not so much that one acute incident, it's the chronic exposures over and over and over again over a 30-year career that you know, manifests itself. Each firefighter has two sets of turnout gear. Immediately after returning from a fire, they're required to wash their gear, including their gloves and hood. They're able to set the washing cycle depending on how dirty their gear is. We never washed our gear. We never took a shower. You know, we'd go home the next day and you'd take a shower and you could smell all the stuff coming out of your skin pores. Education and awareness playing the biggest role in helping change the culture. Gear is never brought off the apparatus floor into living quarters or left in cars. They need to pay attention to it. Um, they need to pay attention to it for themselves, for their health, for long term. Captain Todd Gertz hopes his story helps younger firefighters. When you're young, you, are, you do feel invincible. And at this point in my career, I know I'm not invincible, and I'm thankful that I'm still here. Megan Lowry, NBC26.